Hey fellow agents, this is Agent Smith and we are playing Ripper. So in the previous episode we got through a bunch of different things. We got ourselves into Act 2. We went and decked in a few locations. Uh, Bacchanetti's place and Wofford's place. Got some details and information but we got the help most importantly of Falconetti. And he has come and helped us to jack into Catherine's mine which we had just done. And uh, with that information, we sh well with that ability now, we should hopefully be able to um, come back with information whenever we get the opportunity to assist her memory allowing us to be able to uh, hopefully get a better picture of who the killer was since she was attacked by him so uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and run down to the morgue and see what the mortician has to say now that things have changed a little bit maybe some new information something else to lead us into uh, I don't know just give us tips or clues, otherwise we're just going to have to go reporter style and search around all over the place to see what we can find. Excuse me. Hey! No, this is not Bob. What are you doing here? Or the, not the original not guy, to be here. excuse me. This place is off limits to unauthorized personnel. I'm Jay Quinlan from the Virtual Herald. Uh, who are you? I'm Bob Epples, the new He's pathologist, Bob. and I'm, I'm, not to, I, I, I'm not to speak with you, Mr. Quinlan. Are they both Bob? Well, what are you talking about? Where, where's Farley? Farley? Mr. Farley is no longer employed here. He, he, he was let go. He was fired. Huh. Where is Farley? I have no idea where Mr. Farley is. But from what I've heard about him, I suggest you look for him in a restaurant. One that specializes in fatty cuisine. <laughs> do to do, do. <laughs> Okay. What was that? Why was Farley fired? I, I, I didn't ask, but I got the feeling that Mr. Farley liked to talk a little too much. And I don't plan on making the same mistake. So p please leave, Mr. Quinlan, before someone sees me talking with you. Are you sure you ain't got nothing else for me? My boss finds out you're back, I'll be fired. Now get out! Hmm. That's the information of the talking method of someone who might have some information or some something to help us with. Alright, well. Maybe I got these two. The gym is where she's at. You know what? Let's go check her. Oh, never mind. Cancel. Go back. How about the police station? <laughs> I don't want to jump into any extra discs just yet. talk to uh, Brandon and hopefully maybe even talk, uh, sign some information off with my mama. How you doing today? Oh, filing paperwork. What do you got? A cot in the back there, Quinlan? Here's my stuff. I'm going into interrogation, Brandon. You know, little police work. How's the coffee, Sarge? Mm, nice and hot. Guys got balls so big they collect the gum on the floor. They do. They drag. <laughs> okay. So, old precinct, Sergeant Brandon speaking. What's your problem? Chaikov, I'm talking to you. Right. Don't call him anymore. All right, got a new info. Any new developments, Lou? Sure, but uh, nothing's getting us closer to the Ripper. Like what? Like earlier today, Magnata pulled two cops who have been on the Ripper case since the beginning, replaced them with new guys. Now that's bound to set the investigation back. That doesn't make any sense. That's what I say. I know. Tell me about it. It does when he's the killer. He's got to be the killer. He's on the box cover. It's like he's the killer. That is a red herring. He might be a big old red herring. What's the buzz in the precinct on Falcon Eddie? Word is that outlaw is mixed up in this somehow. Magnata's pulled the hard copies on all of Falconetti's records, and he's had passwords put on computer files. There must be something there he's looking for. Or maybe something he's trying to hide. Lou, what do you know about the Hamilton Wofford murder? I haven't followed the case. I don't know much about the guy except that he did some work for the precinct some years ago. What kind of work? Magnata hired him, I don't know, five, six years back to build a virtual target range for the cadet cyberspace training. So Magnata knew him? 
Yeah, that's probably why he took the case on, even though he's got his hands full with the Ripper. Hmm. Not now, Quinlan. It's not a good time. It's a perfect time. Let's go and see if we can sneak into Magnata's office real quick. As he is uh, obviously an interrogation at the moment. No new information on the desk. This comes up again, though. I'll ask about these if I can. Oh, oh. Maybe see if I can find him in the interrogation room. I don't think I was able to go down here before. So this must be it. <clears throat> One of these two. I'm not a fucking dealer, man. Those were legal dosages for my personal use. I'm holding down like four jobs at once, man. I need the fucking mental clarity, okay? See how much clarity you have when I'm done with you. Those senior citizens you sold that Lucidville B2 had severe arterial hypertension. Five of them popped blood vessels in their heads. Now talk, fuckhead. I'm just watching what you're doing. Oh, Enough, geez. okay? I sold those fossils some lucid bee. Not my fault they had blowouts. I mean, what are you making a big deal out of this for? It's not like they weren't ready for the big sleep. It's touching to see you feel so deeply. They say underneath the skin of every junkie runs the blood of a poet. I wouldn't know. I'm just a cop. He loves his job. <laughs> no performance now, mother. I'm in rehearsal. <laughs> can I keep looking? No? Okay. Let's go see if we can talk to the, uh, the records guy. Oh, I can go through here. What is this? Hello? I meant the uh, guy I spoke to earlier, but apparently this is a records room. Uh, we weren't ha we didn't have access to this before. So... Yeah, the whole section over here was closed off. Or not locked or anything, but just wasn't accessible. At least I couldn't get to it anyway. <laughs> well, let's see what we can find. Um, 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 um. Nothing up here. Nothing up my sleeves. But something right here. Files are locked. Looks like I need some kind of ID card to open them. Oh, it's a slider. Okay, and I did, I definitely don't have any inventory for that. I wonder. I wonder. I wonder. Wonder. Ooh, ah, ooh. Wrote the book, wrote. Actually, I wonder if uh, he left his, his since he dropped all that paperwork uh, or that uh, equipment off of the front desk. If, if maybe the key card for that got us in there. Yoink! It sure is. Boy, he didn't say shit either. Not now, Quinlan. It's not a good time. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll head back to the file room. Okay. Let's get his card. Oh, whoops, can't do it from here. My bad. Let me get a little bit closer. Now can I use his card? Boom. There we go. Let's get that files right. It's one fancy file folder. Hmm. 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 It's McNaughton's personnel file. Could make for interesting reading. 
Yeah, kind of scan it. Vincent Magnano, date of birth, July 4, 24, 1997. As uh, 1432 Houston Street is a detective. Marital status is single. Uh, tech rating is highest of levels. That's not good. Silver Cross Bravery in 2034. Scorpio Award for Highest Bounty Collection. 2035 to 2040. Virtual Cluster for Outstanding Police Work in uh, in Sea Space. And fatalities in the line of duty. Details of each case stored in core backup files. Access file name Slayer. Well, Slayer is definitely going to be something useful. Slayer! For an access thing, so maybe we can find that shit later. It's probably in the interwebs somewhere. Alrighty. Uh, let's see. I'm really not sure where I'm supposed to go yet, but I have an idea. Let's go take a look in her journal. She is a horoscope person. So, Aries. Pis Pisces. Taurus. Libra. Gemini. Capricorn. Uh, Cancer. Scorpio. Got it. That noise in the background you're going to be hearing is uh, her thing. I'm glad I guessed on this thing. It's funny. I bet I had to be in this room for a file. He mentioned a Scorpio Award and all this stuff. That's probably was related. That was the purpose, more than likely, of looking at his file. So, anyway. Can this killer really be a modern, uh, modern day Jack the Ripper? Like the namesake, he eviscerates and brags about it in crazed letters to the public. Like his namesake, he holds a city, a city in terror. The police are helpless to stop him. He strikes without warning and vanishes without a trace. I suspect the Ripper is one of the three people. Vincent Magnata, that's what I was thinking, lead detective in the case. Claire Burton, the metacog, cyber surgeon, is possible. Or... Joey Falconetti, a, li a legendary deck cowboy with a criminal past. That seems unlikely, but it's possible. I doubt it, though. It seems too obvious. Claire Burton it would be the character you wouldn't suspect and therefore probably could be. Uh, and I think Vincent Magnata is just a red herring. We want to believe it's him because he's such a dick. So, anyway. Uh, I must investigate these three. Learn anything I can about them. While at Burton's office, I noticed an old college text called Advanced Notional Mapping. There's an inscription inside. It's a slim chance, but it could be a lead. Hmm. I'll have to get into her office. Okay. Soap delivered his promise. I can, I can learn even more about Magnata, Burton, and Falconetti if I dare. I'm taking measures to hide what Soap delivered. Using the book... The women of Whitechapel and Jack the Ripper seems appropriate. If everything works out, I'll be rich over this. At first, I didn't have two nickels to rub together. I lived in a ratty triplex for a half a dozen years. It never happened to me a second time. What's with this final part? So strange, the back half of this is not working. Hmm. Well... Let's head to, oh, no, let's head to her apartment and see. I think the book she just mentioned is actually, disc four, was actually uh, in, um, I think the, I think the book that she's referring to is in her, in her house. I think I saw a second book on her bookshelf with that title. I also already have the Ripper book. So there's a good chance uh, that is what she's talking about. Disc inserted. Continue. Can't read mine. Yeah, The Women of Whitechapel sure is this book. Now I can take it. Huh. Okay, let's check her journal again. <laughs> that is a wild transition to <laughs> go back and forth between information. 
We'll go back in our electronic journal and see if anything else is done in here. I think it's a code. Because that's a weird sentence she just stated. Look at this last part of this paragraph. At first, I didn't have two nickels to rub together. I lived in a triplex, it's three, for half a dozen, that's six. It will never happen to me a second time, two. Let's try that out. So we got first is one, two for nickels, and a ratty triplex for half a dozen. It will never happen to me a second time. Let's try that. Let's assume starting clockwise from the top. One, two, three, six, two. No? It's more numbers. Oh, it's more numbers than I have. How about two nickels, one, five, five, triplex, half dozen, two. One, two, three, four, five, five, uh, three, six, two. That got it. Got something happening anyway. <laughs> it's a disc. A tiny little disc. Data disc. Thank you. Can I use that on our computer? Is that the purpose of her computer finally? The two nickels almost tripped me up. That's that's some mana fine, sneaky writing. I just figured the numbers. I noticed that everything was a sudden story with numbers in there that made no sense to the whole thing. And that's why she spoke about hiding it. Seems to be every time I need to do something, I have to be in the right spot. Data disk use. There we go. Pop that in there real quick. Forty-six. Death never was any good with numbers. Yeah, I am, though. Forty-six. Oh, shit, you son of a bitch. I was reading that. You make me write this down, huh? Forty-six X squared. Divided by... Death never was any good with numbers. V equals five. I'll make sure right. it's 46x squared divided by 7 i and v equals 5. You know what? Since it's math, and there was a calculator in the newsroom, let's give it a try. I'm glad some places are on disk all the time. <laughs> I was surprised. I keep feeling like every time I go to a location, it's going to pop me back out. and I'm going to have to go and check a, another data disk or something to get it to work proper. There's a calculator over here. And I and V, I think, is a number on their inventory. Let's see what happens. Turn it on. Yeah, it's I and V right there. Four, six... X squared divided by inventory seven equals five. Nope. <laughs> okay, let's reset that. Let's see. Oh, that's just stupid. Pretty I just clever. I just a typed in place to store surveillance bugs. I just typed in the equation exactly as it was. It was a series of button presses. I wasn't actually solving for x or any kind of mathematical. So we got some kind of bug, eye bug, and some sort of beer label. Oh, that's a cigar label. We can put that on Magnata's shit. Hmm. 
<laughs> I think I'm going to go do that one right now. Because that's definitely a doable. That label looks... And I keep on... Allow, not only do they not allow me to keep looking at his cigars, but that label looks almost exactly like the Bull Cigars label that is on his table. And the fact that they keep on allowing me to go in there... If the fact that they keep on allowing me to be able... <laughs> gonna rhyme, right? Uh, but the fact that they let me keep going into his office indicates that I probably do need to bug it. That way I can find information or at least figure out what she was trying to figure out. I still don't think Magnata is a killer. I don't think Falcon Eddie is either. I think that the logical one is Dr. Burton. And the logic only because she's the least obvious one. Or it's somebody we don't know at all. Maybe it's J.J. Walker. As he can't walk. Because <laughs> uh, he claims to be in a wheelchair, you know. That could be a bunch of people. Watch it be like Wofford or something. Like everybody is a suspect now at this point. <laughs> but you know, that's all right. That's the fun of it. The original Jack the Ripper cases were never solved. Hopefully we will come to some resolution on this one. Because technology and detective work is a little bit better. Although this does simulate it a lot. Like with the fact that he kills people and gets involved in stuff. It's very similar to the style um, of the original one. Which had issues of people with race, racism and other things like that. That indicated like the interfering with the case basically. In the original ones. Boom. Slides. Magnata will never even notice the buggers are there. I don't know. He might. That looks completely different than the rest of them. But, uh, yeah, yeah. Until he smokes it and it, like, sparks in his fucking face. Do I have to come back and get it? I wonder. And now, our next location is to go to the hospital. Where is that at? To the Tribeca Center. Oh, I can't jump to a specific location within? Oh, that would be cool if I could. All right, well, anyway, we'll talk to the receptionist, and then uh, maybe we'll be able to, like, I don't know. I think there was, a, uh, there was like, a statue or something in the, in her, in the ICU unit. Unless it's that locked room we haven't gotten into yet. Metacog, hold on. Hey, Jake. Saw your story on the last murder. Look. You know I was just kidding about your squeeze croaking and all, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, God, man, it must have been awful. And I'll tell you something else. Magnata's been looking for you. I mean, I figured you should know, because he is not the kind of guy I would want looking for me. He isn't even the kind of guy I'd want to look at me. Is he here now? He just left. Coast is clear. Thanks, Viv. It's hunting me down now, huh? Why is he looking <sighs> for me? Not enough you don't. But you're welcome just the same. Up to the ICU. So there wasn't anything obvious in the ICU. I wasted my time up there. But maybe, like I said, the receptionist could help me with getting into that other door. So there's a second door on the other end of the hallway, and that has to be her office, right? That's the only thing that makes sense. So let me see. Anything. Oh, look at that. There's something that wasn't there before. Boom. Oh, man. She left that shit there, didn't she? Let's use this scan card on the door upstairs and see if that works. To the door! So this place was left from the elevators. We normally go right to the ICU unit, but uh, this is to the left, which I find hilarious. This is perpetually clean. Like, man, this is always like this. There's no purpose to it other than to stop you, I guess, in front of this doorway. <laughs> but whatever. I thought this was a button pad. I could have sworn it was a keypad. Now let's try this new scan card. Use. Verified. Hello, Dr. Burton. All right. And into her office. There's gotta be a good location in here somewhere to hook in, uh, tag a bug. And that's it right there. 
because I have an eyeball bug, so it would make sense to put uh, replace one of these eyeballs. What's a cyber surgeon need with an anatomy model? Who gives a shit? Oops, that's not what I wanted. Power. <laughs> Clicked the wrong one. She needs it. Oh, oh, whoops. My bad. Do I have to remove one first? Look. There we go. Now I'll use it. Well, that fits in there nicely. Of course. Well, she was probably pre-planning all this stuff. You act like that's some fucking revelation. <laughs> oh, there's information was just down here. A copy of Advanced Notional Modeling. To Claire Burton. Happy something in cyberspace. Happy trails? Happy travels? I think happy trails in cyberspace. Lillian Beck. Lillian Beck. Who is that? Well, it's the person who wrote this book, but... Um, like, is that relevant? Other than the fact that she had stated earlier that it was weird she had a book like that. I don't want to go necessarily back to the door yet. Don't you force me where I gotta go. Let's see if there's any information on her desk while I'm still here. Such a weird series of movements just to go around a desk. Alrighty, what we got here? Dr. Burton's prescription pad. Prescription pad? Object scanned into database. Nice, she just signs her own, she signs her own pads. Object scanned into database. And some sort of document I'm gonna have to take a look at. Okay, we got the both of these. Into mine database. I'm assuming she must still be at the gym. So let's get the heck out of here. I wasn't here at all. <laughs> Alright. I think I'm going to go ahead and stop here. I'm not quite sure how long this was. There was a little bit of cutaways and stuff from walking around and things. Because this game forces me to walk every step of the way. There's no skip reaction or anything like that for movement cycles. So... But either way, I hope you guys have been enjoying this. And if you have, we're going to take a look at the information that we just got off of her stuff. And we're going to continue to check around. We're also going to probably need to talk to... Shit, we need to talk to everybody. Uh, so we're going to be going through and just basically reviewing all the locations we have. And also seeing if we have new information on Burton's stuff. Hopefully, these bugs will give us something. And hopefully, running into Magnata is not going to become a problem for us. So, But uh, either way, I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you did, I will see you all in the next episode of Ripper. Have a great day. Oh, hey. I see that you guys are done with this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, you can see another one over here on the right hand side. And of course, we've also got one on the left as well. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you all next time.